What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. Welcome to the lobby. My name is David. I'm our online campus director. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. We have an awesome service as we get into, what, what, will, what will this be, week, week the six? The final week. Of Guided. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's going to be an awesome service. Uh, if you don't know what this is, we call this the lobby. This is where we hang out before the service gets started like you might in a physical lobby at a physical church. And with me today is my friend Michael. Hello everyone. Hi, friend Michael. Hi. I like your Adidas sweatshirt. Thank you. I like this sweatshirt. I like that sweatshirt When I first bought it, I didn't realize it wasn't going to have a front pocket. Oh, I no longer like it. Oh, that would drive me insane. It did for a while. I'm just gonna I got used to it. I'm just gonna rest my hands in my front pocket now. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> it looks really nice though. I didn't even notice it doesn't have a front pocket. I'm not wearing it, so it doesn't bother me. On um, producer cam is Olivia, <laughs> who's not thrilled about the lack of front pocket either. <laughs> it's like either. a crew neck with a hood. I don't like it. <clears throat> Interesting. I don't mind it. I like the hood. So. Also, yeah. I'm surprised you have me back after last week. Well, we put you in the producer chair this week. <laughs> <laughs> just rein you in a little bit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I decided oh boy. while you were introducing us today, we talked about our series Guided, and I feel like yes. the next series should be Are We There Yet? <laughs> mm. <coughs> what the was the topic no. of Are We There Yet? You <laughs> don't, don't know? know? You just like the <laughs> guided. Like and we're being we guided. There? Like mm. now we're asking, are we there yet? Or we've been guided for like six that. weeks. That could have been like the last, <laughs> you know, that's not the title of his sermon today. Not, it would have been yeah. a great <laughs> last sermon title for the series like, Guided. Are though. we there yet? And yeah. then followed up by here. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, that's Does good. that mean we all and die? Then no, in that's new, new Hope Here. Here. No. Hope here. Yeah. And then, <laughs> Wherever Here is for you. Okay. And then maybe like, what's next? Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are all great ideas you should bring to Pastor Mark. For sure. <laughs> we have them recorded, so we won't forget. <laughs> <laughs> he's, pro he's in the next room. He might be able to hear us right now. He's probably writing down yes. all of these ideas. He's going to claim them as his own. Yeah, definitely. You guys know, though. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, that's all I had. I just wanted to talk all about right. Michael's sweatshirt. So, well, do you have a go. favorite sweatshirt? I'm wearing my favorite sweatshirt today. This is my favorite sweatshirt of mm -hmm. all time. It's the most comfortable sweatshirt I've I ever have, had. I have a favorite sweatshirt that I found in multiple colors. Oh. So, you have every single so one of them? I have all the colors I could find. What kind of sweatshirt <laughs> is it? It's like a lightweight, um, kind of stretchy material. It's by, it's a brand called... I think Jerry or Gary it starts with a G. You stole someone named Gary's sweatshirt. Yes. <laughs> it's just a guy you went to high school it, with. I got him really from cool Costco. Sweatshirt. Oh. And I got like I think I got two colors the first time. And Is it then, a hooded sweatshirt? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I went Is back another time and there was three other colors. And I was yeah, Gary, I gotta get all these colors. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Gary getting rid of all of his sweatshirts. Yep. This Thank one you. this one also came in black. Um, but it was sold out, and they never, they never brought oh. it back. Because for the same, like once I got it, I was like, this, I've never yeah. been this comfortable. We were like, we need to buy the black one. Mm. Never it was an option. Oh, I know it's pretty sad. Ollie, you have a favorite sweatshirt? Yeah, I have a it, like it's an Adidas crew neck, so it's not like a hoodie. She's a crew neck person. I'm a crew neck person because I have an afro. So if I wear like a hoodie, my afro is like, you know. Um. Anyway, so it's an Adidas. <laughs> It's an Adidas crew neck, and it's all black, and like the Adidas mm. logo is like in the middle, like really small, but it's like black too, so it's kind of like hard. So to it's see. like mine, but not like mine. Nothing like yours. The Adidas logo on yours is like huge, She's and I don't yours. have pockets, but see, that's intentional without the hood. I like the huge logo. I do too. I that's like why the, I got this. Oh yeah, me too. And yeah. I have one with a huge logo that I really like too. This, I like Adidas. Th this used to be my favorite sweatshirt mm. until I found those other ones. Until yeah. you found Gary's sweatshirt. Til, yeah, until you stole Gary's sweatshirts. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it might be Jerry. It's probably, it, you said there's two R's? Yeah. That's Jerry. Yeah, that's Jerry. 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 Hmm. Well, yeah. thank you, Jerry. Yeah, shout out to all the Jerry's out there. Yeah. You know, Appreciate if your it. name is Jerry, jump in the chat right now and say hello. <laughs> if not, also say it. Let please. us know. Let us know if your name is or is not Jerry in the chat right now, please. I think yeah. that would be great. But then you have to prove it by telling us what your actual name is. Mm. Yeah, I like that as well. <laughs> Did you guys have, have you always had favorite items of clothes? I don't feel like I did when I was a kid. Even in the high school, I don't feel like I had a favorite item of clothing. Maybe my like Letterman's jacket, because I'm yeah. old and it was still cool to wear your Letterman's jacket <clears throat> to yeah. school every day. So I did love that, show all the sports I played and everything. Yep. But I, I don't feel like it's been until my adulthood where I'm like, oh, that's just the most comfortable thing I own and that's what I want to wear all the time. I don't know why. I think I always had favorite shirts. Sure. Uh, I uh, had a lot of band shirts. Yeah, and I, like, I did too, and I loved those, but I, I don't feel like I, like this is, I mean, you guys are aware I wear this 
a fair yeah. amount. I love it. It's the most comfortable thing Can I've ever worn. Can we ask our super fan lobby? How many times I've worn it? Yeah. <laughs> if you could let me know how many times I've worn this sweatshirt on the lobby, that would be great. Yeah. Oh my word, I bet it's so much. <laughs> yeah. It also, we have learned, is like the best shirt for recording because yes. just a little, you know, peek behind the curtain here. So we have our microphones on underneath our sweatshirts. Me they're too. They're taped on. Olivia, <laughs> yeah. Olivia doesn't need one, but she feels left out. So she also <laughs> tapes one on. Uh, <laughs> but this sweatshirt doesn't scratch on it like at all. And so it's always been a really good one for recording because yes. we have different items of clothing that we wear that make a lot of noise. And then sure. Michael yells at me for wearing them. Not anymore. No, you're not much of a yeller either. Yeah. You more just, he looks at me like a disappointed dad. Which is worse. That David, is terrible. I'm disappointed. Yeah. In that, see, did you see how uncomfortable that made all of you? That's uh, why he always wears that. But yeah, like I had like a, you know, I had band shirts that I, I had my Reliant K shirt. I loved my, yep. a couple of different Reliant K shirts mm -hmm. that I loved. But there was never like, this is the one item, sure. my favorite one. Yeah, I don't remember if I had that or not. Olivia? Um, I would say. Probably was more common for a girl growing mm -hmm. up to. Yeah. There was definitely some things that I like noticed I wore more <clears throat> like just based off of photos and things. Mm. But there's like this one pink skirt. It's the ugliest thing ever. I hate the color pink. And I like wore it all the time. Hmm. And I also wore these like really obnoxious Converse growing up like every like day. All, like all stars? Yeah. But they were like, they had some weird designs on them. <laughs> yep. I feel like you were a Converse all star guy at one point in your life. No. I, I guess I did have some because they were comfortable for me. That's correct. I do not find I, them to be comfortable. I never... I didn't search them out until a pair was given to me, and okay. then I wore them. I was like, "Oh, these are actually yeah. comfortable." And then I bought a few. I made a custom pair one time. Oh, so, down. just to, to clarify, <clears throat> sorry, I said, you're, "I feel like you were a Converse All Star person yeah. at one point," and yeah. you immediately said, no. "No," and then you're like, "Yeah," and then I wore them a bunch, and I, I even made a custom pair. I guess I was. It That's was a yes. It Michael. was only like two I actually years have though. Every single pair. Sure. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't say didn't, forever. Yeah, and, yeah. But you had a period. You had a time period. I had a Converse period, and then I transitioned into Vans. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I probably had a pair of Vans when they're actually like skater shoes because I liked that look. Yeah. Did you like them. to skate? Uh, nope. <laughs> I like to skate. I was in the in the punk rock scene though. Yeah, I said I had fit. Like that was my that was my like music choice, and a lot of my friends were in that. Where I just never dressed that way, other than the band shirts. Like I did have like the yeah. the, the shirts of punk bands that yeah. I wore in like junior high and even a little bit in high school, but uh, I didn't. I never like committed to that bit. Was sure. your Converse period, Michael, the first period of your School uh, lip ring? No. Ooh, good question. I don't good even question. think I had my lip ring when I started wearing I do feel Converse. a little left out. You both have facial piercings, and I'm just... We could do that as a, like as a lobby Here's episode. My face. <laughs> I'm thinking like an eyebrow one, maybe. <laughs> what a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> we should ask Pastor Mark. Should we pierce Pastor Mark's no. ear or something live he, on the is lobby? Is his ear pierced? I feel like part of me maybe it was. Oh, yeah, part of me thinks that he would is want that. Ear, is his ear pierced? Um, I'm I don't sure. remember now. He, likes, he, 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 wears likes, a, he, he wears a lot of jewelry Yes. for a man who is older than we are. His pieces of flair. We'll his say. pieces of flair. <laughs> What's that? What a cool space? guy. Space, yeah. <laughs> no, I remember the first, maybe, maybe it was the second week we recorded his sermon. And I, I'm listening, uh, you know, we're trying to get his mic set up. And and there's just this noise that I like can't figure out. I'm like, why is this mic? Like, I was worried our, something was wrong with one of our microphones. <clears throat> so I stopped him like three different times while he was preaching. And finally, I was like, I don't know. I got to come over and try to figure something out with your mic. And I like pull his, he was wearing like a button up. And it was closed yeah. over his, and he had this necklace with this giant metal thing on it. Just, every time he moved, it was like clanking against the metal on the microphone. I was like, oh yeah, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> I was like, I did not expect you to have this giant what, necklace What, the on. metal thing wiping yeah. across the microphone is a problem? Well, our, you know, our previous pastor wore no jewelry yeah. mm -hmm. until he moved to California, and then I saw him with a puka shell necklace on. He's a wild man. Shout now. out to Pastor Mike and his puka shell necklace. I've never seen Pastor Mark wearing a puka shell necklace. No, I have not. Should either. we get him one? I think so. I think we should yep. we should get Pastor Mark a very dated piece of jewelry from each like from each time period of our lives. So I'll go Ooh. puka shell like from 
kind of made like junior high issue. I had the I didn't wear them, but the ball, all my, all my friends the ball did. necklace. Oh yeah, things. so you'll get one of those. What's a what's oh, one from you no. as you're, you're younger than we are? This will how we'll close the lobby. Oh you're gonna... okay, so actually, what <clears throat> I think about is when we had like a skating rink, and then there was like a little arcade area, and if you mm -hmm. did games, you could like you know buy prizes and stuff. And one of the prizes was one of those like best friend necklaces the heart that's broken yeah that's broken and i had a lot of those best, you should definitely best friends. You should. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully none of them watch uh, anyways <laughs> they all, right now they're all finding out they weren't the only one to have that best friend necklace with olivia oh no so i'm gonna give pastor mark one i love this and idea. i'll have the other I love this idea. side <laughs> I love this yeah. idea. Uh, well <laughs> that's wonderful i love that yeah if you have any great ideas for jewelry we can get for pastor mark uh please let us know but uh, we do have a really great service, and I'm I'm kind of sad we're wrapping up the series because I really love guiding, but we've got Easter coming up soon. We do. So it, it, everything will be okay. And then we have Are We There Yet? Everything. I don't think we're actually doing <laughs> that, but we'll find out. I guess you'll find out. We haven't announced our new series yet. So uh, we love you, New Hope family. Thank you so much for joining us for our service today. Thanks for hanging out in the lobby. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Olivia, mm -hmm. for being here, uh, and we will see you guys in just a minute. Hey, church family, we're so happy that you joined us today. We've got a great service plan for you. We're in week six of our guided series, and so far, I feel like it's been pretty great. What do you think? I, I find it impossible that we're on week six. I know, you know? it feels like we just started, right. <laughs> but it's been really good, and we hope that you guys have really enjoyed this service. Yes, but before we get to the message, we have two wonderful songs, so come and join us for worship. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. And what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough. And I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. That's why I trust Him. I sought the Lord, 
Go back to the beginning I can't control what tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Is the place where you promised to be Forsaken, 
church. Thank you again for being here, for worshiping with us, for going through this guided series with us. Pastor Mark's message is coming up in just a minute, but before we get to that, Patty and I just have a few things that we want to mention. The first thing is our Connect card. We talk about it every week because we love the Connect card. Yes, we do. I don't want to speak for you. Oh, I love the Connect card. Yeah, yeah. but, but I'm pretty, I, I feel safe speaking for you. I don't like card. it though, just like, like in general. I like when people fill it out. That's a good point. Yeah. An empty Connect card, not my favorite. Yeah, right. Not my favorite. When you fill out a Connect card, <gasps> My, ab favorite. my absolute yes. favorite. And there's a link in the chat right now that you can click and fill out that Connect card. You can always find that Connect card even when we're not live, even when there's no link. You can go to our website, newhopegear.com slash connect, fill out the Connect card there. But church, we would just love to hear from you, to, to know that you're joining us. If you have any questions about the church, looking for ways to get involved, groups to join, things like that, you can do all that on the Connect card. And then my personal favorite part is there's a spot on there for prayer requests. And every week our staff, in fact, we just did it earlier today, our staff gets together and we pray over those prayer requests because we believe in the power of prayer. And so we would love to know how we could be praying for you. Fill out that Connect card. Uh, like I said, there's a link in the chat where you can do all that cool yes. stuff. Yes, and Pastor Mark has a great message for us. Before we get to that, also Andrea, Pastor Andrea has a great message for your kiddos. So if you're newer here, it's you- It's so good. It, yeah, it's Always so check fun. out new Hope Here Kids. So we have a message for adults, but then also Pastor Andrea has a message for your kiddos. So like elementary, preschool, um, take out a second device, click the yep. link that's in the chat, and then hook your kiddos up with that. And yeah, they have a great time listening to some worship, some game, a great teaching just for your yep. kiddos. Uh, so yeah, click the link that's in the chat, get your kiddos with their device, and then you get to listen to Pastor Mark without the distraction, which yep. is also a that's win. That's my favorite part of yep. New Hope Your Kids. Yep. And there's different services for the different age groups. So if you have a preschooler, uh, and then you have a fifth grader, you know, they, there's a different service for their speech of their specific age levels as well. It's the most age appropriate that it can be to keep them engaged. So yeah, we love that. We love Pastor Andrea. Yes, so, so fun. Much. Check that out. We also want to take this time to give back to God his tithes and our offerings. There's a link in the chat. You can always go to our website, newhopehere.com slash give to see all the different ways that you can give. And we just really want to thank those of you who give through New Hope. Um, we, we just, we can't fulfill our mission to go, grow, and give and spread the good news of Jesus and who he is without your, your support. So we thank you for that. Um, and yeah, and like I said, there's a link in the chat. Yes, and if you're joining with us live, we also have hosts who are available to pray with you live. So Our hosts a, love praying for you live, by the yeah. way. Every, every single week, Mark Allen and I are usually in there, and sometimes we have other hosts as well. Always our favorite when we when we get a chance to pray for somebody. So don't think that, like, well, I don't really want to bother them. with. That's like our favorite part of That's Sunday good. mornings when yeah. we get to pray with you. 
Yeah, so make David's day. Make my day. And, and Mark Kalin's. I feel like that's an old movie quote. <laughs> make my day. I don't know. But make David's day. <laughs> Click the link that's in the chat. Yeah. All you have to do is share your prayer requests, and they would love to be able to pray for you. They'll share prayer back uh, by typing in the, in the chat. And like David mentioned a second ago, if you're not joining us live, put your prayer request on the Connect card, and we would love to be able to pray over you this week. Uh, but church, wherever you're at today, we also get to pray for you. So let's pray together. God, thank you for uh, each person who is joining with us now, whether they're joining with us live or they're watching this message way later on. God, you know each person who, who is with us, who's worshiping, who's tuning into your message, God. And we just pray uh, that every heart would be open to the things that you are teaching us this week. God, we've, we've loved this series as we've learned what it means to be guided by you and your Holy Spirit and uh, through listening to other Christians or, or opening up scripture. God, there's so many different ways that you guide us. And so we're just so grateful for that message that you've had for us every week and I pray that uh, as we are wrapping up this series Lord that we would just each hold on to those things that you have taught us and, and maybe new things that you're going to teach us today about how you are guiding us maybe there are people joining today who have a big step of faith that they need to take or a big decision that they need to make Lord uh, whatever it might be God we just know that you are the God who sees all of those things God and you are directing all of those things and so uh, as your people today as your follower as your children uh, we just want to step in those things and so we just pray uh, God, for the courage to do that uh, for the willpower to do it, whatever it is that we're needing uh, help us to just truly be, be led by you today uh, and Lord we know that there are people who are joining us today who might be uh, in, in worship and kind of message and they don't really know what they've gotten themselves into or really what they're doing here and God I just pray that you would speak so clear to each of those people that uh, you have a place for them here in the church family that you have a place for them uh, in Christianity Lord uh, we just pray that people would turn their lives over to you today, Lord, and recognize you as a loving Father who is near and kind and who sees them, and knows them, and loves them. So we just pray that for each person joining today um, who, who maybe don't know you or who feel like they are far from you. Uh, so Lord, thank you for being bigger than all of our things, God, and for seeing and knowing all of our things. Uh, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, for the last several weeks, we have been looking at how God guides us. I've been really encouraged to hear from different people as they've taken some of the things we've talked about and put them into practice and have questions, okay, how does this work and that work? Just to see how God is using His Word just really encourages me to see it. So in these weeks, we've looked at how he guides us. First of all, preparation to make sure we're willing to submit to his will to know that we actually do want to be guided. And then we've looked at different ways through his word, through his spirit, how we can test the spirits to make sure it's him. And so I'm going to make an assumption that as we've walked through these, this series, you have actually been guided by the Lord. And there are things that you have seen in your past where you said, wow, this is a confirmation. I have done that and that. And it, so the, these messages have not been new information to you. It's just confirmation of how God has led you and guided you. For some of you, there are some new things that you discovered, not necessarily from what I've had to say, but God has guided you in some things and then these things have applied to it. So, We've moved along that way and we may feel, wow, we are doing exactly what God wants us to do. We are being guided by Him. We are being obedient to Him. We've taken all the steps that we are supposed to take. That's where I want to just take us and caution us a little bit because that's not all there is to it. It is not just finding God's will and going and doing it. So I'm okay. I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. Because I have known some believers, some Christians, 
people that are following Jesus, guided by God's Spirit, doing what they're supposed to do, that are not enjoyable people. I mean, their spirits are not right. The fruit of the Spirit is not evident in their lives. They might be in the center of God's will, but you don't see it in their character. You don't see them becoming more like Jesus. And so following God's will and doing all the right things is not enough. You have got to make sure that you are becoming more like Jesus, because if you're following his guidance, you're going to become more like him. It's just naturally going to happen. Now, Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. They were people that were guided by the Spirit of God, followers of Jesus, that had all kinds of issues. We're going to take a look at one of them in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Paul, speaking to them, says, I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another, so that there may be no divisions among you, and that you may be perfectly united in mind and in thought. My brothers, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, oh, I follow Paul. Another says, oh, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Or still another, I follow Christ. There's divisions that are happening there. You see, in following God and being guided by Him, there are some pitfalls that we need to be aware of. Because just saying, I've been guided, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, is not enough. Let's look at some of those pitfalls. First one, and probably the main one because it influences all the others, is the issue of pride. This is a pitfall for many Christians that are following God's will. If I am doing God's guidance, which is perfect because God is perfect, it is easy for me to steal the glory from God. Look at me. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And then looking at others saying, and you need to be doing the same thing. It's a sign of pride to be unwilling to admit that I'm wrong, to think that I am perfect and I've got God's will all figured out and I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. You see, if God is guiding me and God is perfect, therefore I am act acting perfectly, which means if you're acting different than me, then you're wrong and I am right in all of that. Successful daily guidance is not an overnight thing that, oh, I found God's will, I'm stepping into God's will, all done. That's not the way it works. There's a lot of trial and error in the process because you are still very much human. You aren't in heaven yet, and you do not have the ability to discern God's will perfectly. You do have an ability to discern His will. He wants you to know His will. He's going to show you His will. But you're not going to follow His will perfectly. And we need to recognize that, that we are still faulty people. The Corinthian church had three areas of pride. One was in this whole issue I just read to you, who we follow. And they had raised up different men of God Great men of God, apostles, even Jesus himself say, oh, I follow him. Oh, I follow him. I follow him. So they've created these divisions. Kind of looks a lot like denominations today. Oh, I follow Luther. Oh, I follow Wesley. Oh, I follow Calvin. Or I'm independent. I don't follow anybody. I just follow Jesus. Exactly what some of the people were saying here. Say, oh, you follow Paul. You follow Cephas. Or you follow Apollos. I follow Jesus. You talk about pride coming in there. Of I'm the one that's right. You all are wrong in every way. And that we need to take a look at that and make sure that we see what the scripture says. Because Paul's answer as he's saying, you're all saying this, but is Christ divided? He is not divided. Was Paul referring to himself? Was I crucified for you? No. Was New Hope Church crucified for you? No. The fact that you might attend New Hope Church or listen, listen to a New Hope podcast 
does not make you better than somebody else. And if we let pride come in of, oh, look what I'm doing, look who I'm following, we are missing what God has for us. So this whole area of church denominations or what church we go to, that sort of thing can be a real source of pride that the scripture very clearly says, knock it off. That is not the direction you should go. There's another area of pride. We see it also in this book of of 1 Corinthians, but it's not clearly spelled out as much as this one. It's the issue of standards, of things that many of them extra biblical, that the Bible doesn't say do this, but we choose to give up or to add on to our lives because we are committed to Christ. Because in some of those areas, he guided us. There are things that we say, okay, I don't watch that, or I don't do this, or I go to church regularly, or whatever it might be that we have added on. It's extra biblical, but not anti-biblical, not against what God's word has to say. It's just individual for you, that God has spoken to you, given you convictions, guided you in certain ways. In, in this uh, book that we're looking at, they had the issue of eating meat offered to idols. Now, a few weeks we talked about that and kind of explained that. So you might want to go back and, and look at one of those messages where we talked about it because it's an extra biblical thing. They were trying to figure out this meat that is offered to idols. Should I do it? Should I not do it? And you had people guided by the Spirit some to eat the meat, some to not eat the meat. It's not an issue of the meat, so don't worry about that. It's the issue of how God guides on specific things and convictions that he gives to you. And that's where pride entered in, because I don't do this, or I go to church every Sunday, you don't. So I am better than you in some way. I'm a better Christian because I have a clearer understanding of the guidance of God than what the rest of you have. You see, that is a prideful thing that those of us who are being obedient to God need to watch that and make sure that we are not creating something that Jesus, uh, creating an attitude, a spirit that Jesus doesn't want us to have. You're a better Christian because you're obedient to his guidance. That guidance is for you. He may have a different guidance for somebody else. It's not, I'm better than others because I'm doing this. It's, I'm better for Christ, a better Christian because I'm doing it. It has nothing to do with comparing ourselves to other people but it's a comparison to the road that I have traveled where I was here and now God has brought me here. I was going this direction. God convicted me. God guided me. Now I'm following him in this direction. It's all about you in comparison to the road you traveled where you've been. It's not about me compared to him, compared to her, what we are doing and how I do it better because you do not know how God has guided others. So it might be in those areas of just different standards, just different directions that God has taken us in. I also see it in the area of spiritual gifts. Again, 1 Corinthians addresses that because there's some issues that are going on, people being very prideful because they have particular gifts. God has guided them. God has blessed them with spiritual gifts that they are instructed to use. It's very easy for some of us that have a spiritual gift to say, oh, I have this, God guided me, therefore you should have this too. You should be doing what I am doing. We see that in the area of evangelism and outreach. If he's given you a great gift that, man, you're just able to share your faith with people and they're responding, you get the idea, everybody should be doing this. Everybody should be doing exactly what I am doing. Uh, Maybe a gift of service in the church or in your community. And you just have that ability to just step in and serve uh, humbly in different ways. But then pride comes in of, I'm doing all this work. Why aren't they doing it? I sh- they should be doing just as much as I should be doing. And we classify our gifts. Oh, these are the better ones. And 
Corinthians were, was doing that. Oh, this is the gift that you really want. You want to have this speaking in tongues. And, and Paul says, I'd rather be able to prophesy or preach, speak in a language people understand than doing all of that. And so we need to watch out for pride in all of these areas because you can be in the center of God's will as far as being guided, being obedient, and have stinking attitudes through the whole thing. You are not more like Jesus when you have that kind of an attitude, even though you are obedient and being guided by him. So one of the pitfalls we need to look out for is this whole area of pride. Make sure that you are humbly following the Lord, not impressed with yourself because I'm doing all of these things. Second one is domination. Now, by that, uh, it's a misconception that if God has guided me with a particular instruction, everybody else should be doing that. Now, this ties right in with the pride and, all, and dovetails with it very well. But we force our views, our direction on other people. So God has told me this. Therefore, I'm going to tell you what God has told you, which may not be what God has told you at all. It's what he told me. But I have decided you need to follow all the rules and all the, the guidance that God has shown me because it's impacted me. This is huge. If you're following God's guidance, there is such a joy in the middle of that. And it's so easy to say, oh, everybody else needs to do it just this way as well. I remember my first year in college. I sang with the college choir, and that was kind of the in-group of what was going on uh, and, and ministry that was taking place. And we traveled on different tours, and, and it was probably uh, the fall break that we went on a choir tour and just had this blessing of God in that. I mean, through it all, it was just one of those times when the Spirit just came upon us, and man, spirit of conviction and drawing close to God and just how he worked in all of that in our lives as we are ministering to others, singing in, in churches and that sort of thing. And I remember when we got back, the president of the choir, which, you know, we had officers and all that thing back in the day, and he stood up in chapel talking to the rest of the campus saying, we have had this spiritual experience and now the rest of you need to get on board and need to do all this stuff. And I remember how it came across at the time. I, even as one that was involved in all of that, it's like, ooh, ooh, there's something not quite right about this. God has worked in my life this way, therefore he should be working in your life and you're doing something wrong if you're not having the same experience that I'm having. It just came across that way. And God is so much bigger than what he's doing in my life. And I do not need to force my guidance onto you. It's hard to, it, well, it's easy to do because it impacted my life so much. When God guides you and you're in the center of his will and you just have that joy and all that goes along with it, it's so easy to say, everybody else needs to have this same thing. Well, they need to have God guiding them, not you guiding them, saying they need to follow God in the same way that you are following God. God is so much bigger than your way of thinking. If he wants to work in someone's life different than I think he should, he does not need my permission to do that. And he works, it's just one of the cool things about him, he works so individually. It's not this blanket, everybody is guided the same way. No, he takes us on these different paths and allows us to impact our world in different ways because of those different paths. And so, if God has guided you, you're following his guidance, be careful that you don't dominate others by telling them they need to do the same thing that you are doing. You just need to let God work in their lives. There's a third pitfall that I wanna mention here, and it is that of fanaticism. Now, pride and domination often lead to fanaticism. Ah, this is it. This is, you know, I'm just crazy about this and nothing else matters because everybody's supposed to be doing this. 
And the idea is we are supposed to be coming more like Jesus. A big part of that is being guided by Him, following His direction, following His will. But it's becoming more like Jesus that is more important than specific guidance that He takes us along the way. And I have seen people that major on minors. God led them in a certain way, therefore this is the important thing. Years ago, in Southern California of all places, there was a church that was built to look exactly like a barn and intentionally to look like a barn because that pastor had been saved in a barn. Therefore, people get saved in barns. I knew an evangelist in the Midwest that was doing barn revivals, literally, because he had been saved in a barn. I guess it was a thing that used to happen years ago. If you didn't have meeting places, put bales out, and people could sit in the barn and do it. And it had such an impact on his life that everybody needs to get saved in a barn. Well, that's not exactly in Scripture that barn salvations are better than church salvations or bar salvations or wherever it happens to be where you accept Jesus as Savior. And you can major on different minors as this is the most important thing and become radical about that, fanatical about that. You can become more focused on the guidance of Jesus that he gives you in his life than you are on the joy and just becoming like Jesus. That's what he wants for you. And to have somebody that is faithfully following God's guidance as in taking the right steps in right directions, but has have a wrong attitude and a wrong spirit, you're missing the point. You have made following this step that God led you into as more important than becoming like Jesus. So, we need to watch out for that. There's one more, and it was in this passage that we looked at, and it ties in with all of this. When you have pride, when you are dominating, when you're a fanatic on all of these things, divisiveness. Paul was just brokenhearted because here are these Christians in Corinth, in the same church, that are following Jesus, that are guided by Jesus, and yet they are so divisive of, oh no, this is more important, that's more important, I'm following Paul, I'm following Cephas, I'm, I'm following Apollos, all of those things. And they, they were losing the unity. You see, you can be guided by the Spirit of God, obeying the steps that He's leading you in, because those are actions. Those are the things outside of yourself where you take a step, go directions, do the things He wants you to do, and internally not get along with any other believers. That is not His desire for us. You see, God's guidance will always make you more like Jesus. If it is more than just, oh, here's the step. I'm supposed to make this step. It's supposed to make you more like Jesus. It's not just outward actions. It's an internal attitude that you have, drawing closer to Christ. Following God's guidance should make you easier to live with, not more difficult to live with. And man, I have known some Christians. They love Jesus and they're going to heaven. I don't like them. I don't want to be around them because they don't have the Spirit of Jesus in their lives. And when we are following God's guidance, it's also His desire that we become more loving, we have more of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, we become more like Him. We become stronger spiritually, and every act of obedience develops habits of listening to Him, following Him, and should make us more like Him. Some of those who hit these pitfalls, pride and domination, fanaticism, divisiveness, are actually moving away from Christ. Does that make sense? I mean, it just seems crazy to me by obeying Christ, taking the steps, 
taking the actions, accepting the job that you're supposed to do, moving to this location, uh, whatever it is, taking those steps, but not having a heart that makes them more and more like Jesus. There is a great peace that comes when you are following God's guidance. That peace needs to be reflected in every part of your life. It needs to be reflected in how you treat others. And just saying, I'm obeying God because I took this step is not enough. You need to be able to become more like Jesus. So watch out for some of those pitfalls and make sure when you are being obedient, when you are taking the right steps, check your heart. Make sure that you have the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Make sure that you're becoming more like Jesus. Let's pray together. Lord, there are some, maybe even because of the passages that we've looked at, that have taken steps to follow you, that are being guided by you, and they're experiencing the, the joy of being in the center of your will. I pray that in addition to outward physical steps, following you, going the direction you want them to go, that they're also keeping their heart close to you. They're not becoming proud of look at me, see what I'm doing, but they're giving all glory to you. And their spirit is becoming more and more like you. That's my prayer, Lord. And I pray this in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. Hello again, church. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being here throughout this series, Guided. I hope yeah. it's been as beneficial and as meaningful for you as it's been for me. I know it has yes, been for you been too, so Michael. Good. We've yeah. talked a lot about it. Uh, it's been such a great series. And if, if it has been meaningful to you, or maybe you have some, some questions, you want to go a little bit deeper, well, we have a thing called the Grow Podcast, which yes. I really, really encourage you to check out because Pastor Mark, every single week, goes deeper into his message. I'm there and I, I ask him questions from the message. Uh, we go a little bit deeper into some of the things he talked about. Sometimes we go in directions he didn't really talk about. Yeah. There's there's things that he doesn't always get to in the message. Yeah. Random stuff pops into my mind sometimes, and what? I throw you that at him as no, well. Yeah, I know, right? It. It's hard to believe. <laughs> but I really encourage you to check that out. So you can always find that. New episodes go live every single Monday on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash newhopeer, on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I really encourage you to check it out. Yeah, and David, I don't know if you can believe it, but next week is Palm Sunday. I can't believe it. And two weeks from now is Palm, Easter. Palm Not Sunday. that kind of Palm. Where we all hold our palms up. Yes, and, and, and high praise. Five. We can do that too. Is that not what Palm Sunday is? <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, the Sunday that Jesus came Oh, yeah, that's more important yeah, than so, us high-fiving. Yes. Uh, yes. But we want to we celebrate with you guys that. Palm Sunday and yeah. also Easter. And Easter's Easter, in two weeks. Easter is that's coming crazy. up. It's going to be a great service. It's also be. a really good time to invite your friends and family. It is. Uh, there's studies that show people are more more likely to join you on an Easter yep. Sunday. Yeah, so, sig significantly yes. more likely. And we have, we have some really cool stuff planned for our online service yeah. at New Hope here. Uh, but if you're near one of our campuses, either Tioga or Williston, yes. really encourage you to go check those out in person. And like Michael was saying, the the odds of someone saying yes to an invite around Christmas and Easter are so much higher. Yeah. And, and we do everything we can to make it a welcoming Sunday, a special Sunday, a memorable Sunday, and yes. most importantly, a Sunday where we present the good news of what Jesus Absolutely. did for us uh, yeah. on Easter and what we're celebrating. So, yes. yeah, encourage people to, to, to be joining you. We, we can't wait to see you there. It's going to be such an awesome time in a couple weeks. Come back next week for our, uh, for our Palm Sunday service. We love you so much, New Hope family. We're so glad that you were here. And until we see you next time, let's go and be the church.